YouTube, what's going on guys? My name is Mike and I'm back with another video. And I have a pretty cool one for you guys today. So what we're gonna be doing is compost tea. I'm sure you can see this thing in the background. This is my compost tea brewer that I made from scratch. And I'm gonna show you guys how I put it together and how to make compost tea today. So without further ado, let's get right into it guys. Okay, so right here I have my compost tea brewer. Now I made this thing from scratch. I will put a little uh, link down in the description or a uh, PDF down in the description of how I made this and, um, and how I put it together. So you can find that down below. And also guys, if you like this type of content, if you wanna see more of this, do me a favor, hit me, give me the like button and uh, give me the subscribe button. Those two things are very important to helping my content spread and get other like-minded gardeners this info um, right to their, their uh, news feed and YouTube. So go ahead and hit that like button. Let's go ahead and get into this. So from the, the surface, it just looks like a garbage can. It's because it is a garbage can. What I did though is I added some, uh, some plumbing on the inside of it. And now, let me go ahead and take this out. So basically, I'll run, give you a run through. Um, this is the aerator. This basically pumps air through my air pump here. It sends it through the tube into this side. It comes all the way through this. It hits the cap on the outside, so there's no, um, there's no way the air can escape from here. So it sends it straight down to this, which I'll get to in a little bit. And then most importantly, down all the way down into this manifold down here where it sends air out of these two little black holes on each straight section, it'll pump air. And uh, that aerates the, the compost and gets it moving and all the, the, um, the water moving and everything like that. So um, that's the basic system. So you can find the link down in the description below for this thing, how to make it. It's pretty straightforward. There's no glue required. Um, nothing like that. It's just putting the pieces together, drilling the holes, and ready to rock and roll. Um, and then, of course, down at the bottom, I put uh, this. I don't think is the pl in the plan, but I added this myself. I just used some um, some uh, what was this like a silicone base type of uh, compound, and I just kind of drilled a little hole, stuck the, the a PVC fitting, a ball valve in. And that allows me to open and close to, to get my compost out of the bottom. What else I did is I, I fitted a, um, what do you call these? Like a uh, garden hose attachment uh, fitting into this PVC. That's so I can hook a garden hose up to it, open this up and let it uh, drain right into my plants. I can fill it into a five gallon bucket. You can really do whatever you want with it at that point. Um, Sorry for the, the noise. The lady, we have a little bit of an audience over here. Let's go ahead and see what they're up to. Hey, quiet down in there. I'm trying to film a video. Okay. So, back to the video. Sorry about that. So, what the last piece, uh, the last component to this outside of just the, the PVC fittings to make the air manifold, the drain valve at the bottom, um, I also added, this is something extra. This is just how I fill the, the, the tank or the, the garbage can up um, without having to monitor it. So this is just the internals of a toilet bowl. It's a float valve. So basically um, when it's empty and the float is down, this is going to shoot water out of the top here until it fills all the way up to the point to this point where the float then moves up, closes this valve and my tank is full right to about here, which equates to roughly, it's hard to say, probably about 45 gallons. Um, this is a 45 gallon container. So at the top here, maybe 40, so who knows, about 40 gallons. Um, as you can see, this is where it fills to. This is the dirt from last year, the compost. I tried to clean this out really well, but anyway, um, let me show you guys basically how this works. So I just, over here, I, I outfitted um, two valves, one for my regular garden hose that just feeds the plants. Uh, I, I cleaned it all up for you guys today. And then the other side is for the, uh, the garbage can tank. Um, I just put a union just in case I wanted to take this off at some point. So watch what happens when I open this. This will begin to fill and um, like I said, this when this valve lifts, it turns off. So we can essentially turn this on in the morning, walk away from it, 
know that when we get back from work or wherever we're going that this will be filled and um, and ready to go without overflowing so it kind of gives us a, a sense of um, carelessness if you will alrighty so we'll let this fill up and I'll go over the compost with you guys now oh yeah um, one more thing I wanted to show you what this does so what we do here is let me prop you guys up okay I have you guys propped up so the next thing that we're doing is this is just a mesh bag, like a painter's bag or a paint strainer. You get these from Home Depot for like two or three dollars and you get like a pack of ten. Uh, this one's actually frayed. I used it last year. It's a little ripped up. So I'm actually going to use two to double down. Um, like I said, they come in a pack of like three or five so you can get a bunch of these. Um, what I'll do is I'll stick one inside of the other so we have like a double layer and we're going to fill this bag up with compost. Uh, this way the compost stays out of the water. Uh, you don't have to do this per se. If you're going to be running your compost through like a pump or um, you know, irrigation or something like that, you're going to want to do this just to make sure no clumps and lumps get into your, your, your um, distributors and, and clog them up. Uh, but you, like I said, you don't have to do this. You can dump your compost right into this if you're just going to run it through a garden hose like I'm going to be doing. I just do this as a little added precaution and also to show you, you basically fill this up with compost and then you slide it over this stick that I have here and air will blow down in that stick and basically aerate the inside of the compost bag. And then what I'll do to, to I'll just kind of tie this up here just in a, a loose knot. Uh, like so once I have my compost in and now it's essentially going to blow air through the compost which is then going to release all that beautiful humic and, and uh, all the bacteria into the water which then gets aerated even further by the manifold in the bottom there. So um, that's kind of how that goes. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly how it works in practice. Uh, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't make any sense to you guys, if you want to see more details on this, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, and I'll be sure to answer it and, and to my best of ability, uh, give you guys as much information as possible because I truly believe that everybody should be using compost tea in their garden, whether you're uh, a hobby gardener, whether you're a large scale farm, um, anything. So let's go ahead and get over to the compost pile and I'll give you guys some examples of why you should be using compost and what it does for your garden. So let's go over there now and fill this bag up. All right, guys, so I got you on the tripod. You can take a walk with me here. So um, I just want to give you guys a couple of good reasons why you should be using compost uh, as a tea in, in your garden. So number one is bacteria and fungi. Um, bacteria are the, um, the livestock, if you will, of the soil. They fundamentally change how the soil takes in nutrients and releases them toward the, to be plant available. So for a good example here, let's say something dies. Um, you know, it could be anything. It could be a beetle, it could be a bird, something dies. Now that hits the ground and it's laying on the soil. So what happens there, sorry guys, I had to, I had to set you up. So what happens when the bird hits the ground is um, it, become, it starts to decay and decompose. Now the bacteria start to kind of eat away and chew away at that thing and then they move through the soil or around that area and then get eaten by other bacteria, protozoa and larger types of organisms and they create kind of a cycle in the soil. Um, then fungi, of course, move into that thing and it's, they start to break down the harder, uh, harder to decompose substances like the bones and, and all types of stuff like that. Um, and they start to break down. Now all this stuff eventually ends up into the soil and it's what uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham refers to as the soil food web where bacteria eat other bacteria that eat other bacteria that then eat you know larger critters like earthworms or, or uh, beetles and, and uh, arthropods they kind of move in and they start eating everything and it's just a huge soil food web that ultimately ends up as plant available nutrients at your plant roots. So uh, by making compost tea, you're creating that, that, that bacterial, that fungal um, population in their kind of super climate in water because like we discussed in other videos, bacteria are aquatic creatures. They like to move about and reproduce and eat in water. So by giving them that environment, plus a food source and the perfect climate to reproduce, they just 
blow up and their populations go crazy. So you're creating all of this great bacteria and then you're putting it right on the plant roots as a water soluble you know, formula. So all that bacteria goes right to the plant roots and they begin to do their thing. They begin to reproduce and eat and they, they, uh, they create, they, they, they let go of their fecal matter and then they get eaten or they die and then something else comes and eats them and then they produce fecal matter and that fecal matter goes to the plant root. The earthworm comes in, sucks it all up. So it's this huge, huge ecosystem that you're essentially uh, harboring and then putting right onto your plants. So it's a really good thing to do. I could go on about this for hours and hours, guys. I love it so much. Let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this bag here filled with the compost that we've made um, previously. And you could check out a link for how to make the compost. I'll put that up in the card up top here or somewhere over here. Uh, you could check that out. I'll show you how to make compost from start to finish. And I do a day by day update on how many times I turned it and this, that, and the other. But that's the other video. You could check that out. Let's go ahead and get this, uh, let's get this bag filled up with compost. So we don't need to go crazy. This is the beginning of the spring here. Um, nothing is really going too wild, uh, but this compost is gonna be great. I know it. So all I really do, is I just kind of fill the bag up, maybe about halfway, three quarters of the way. I don't strain it, I don't sift it or anything like that. That's what this bag is for. Now you can, if you were using kind of, uh, you know, my compost here is I'm calling it pretty good to go, like pretty complete. If you had a compost that wasn't complete or wasn't close to complete, you could um, still use it, but you're gonna wanna sift it out and make sure that you don't have all the big lumps and clumps in it. So. That's about all I need there. I just grabbed about two handfuls, two good clumps of it. We'll bring it over there. This should be everything. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more to the pile there. There we go. And this stuff is great, guys. Let me show you here. Let me give you a close up on what we're looking at. So, there's the compost. It's, this is kind of a conglomerate of it right now, but as I break into this, it is just awesome, awesome black gold here. So, Man, it smells great too. Have you smelled it? It does not smell like uh, anaerobic. It doesn't smell like anything gross. It is just uh, a nice earthy scent. Now this was once chicken poop, which might gross some of you guys out, but to me, I absolutely love it. So I'll just go ahead, I'll throw that in the bag there. And um, we have a good maybe three pounds of compost in here. So let's go back to the compost brewer and we'll get this in there tied up and I'll show you guys basically how it's done. Let's go over there now. Man, the chickens do love it this time of year. I was just on my way back to the brewer and I see these ladies are loving it. Everything is uh, leafed out. We're in the middle of spring here and uh, they are just loving their natural environment over in the under the pines here. So I built their little chicken run underneath all these pine trees. So they get great shade and tons of bugs to scratch on. Their run goes all the way along the fence line that way, it goes all the way back along the fence that way. So they have a great, great environment to live in, eat tons of bugs. They take all those bugs and bring them right back into the coop at night and they poop them right on that, that, uh, that hay mat that I built for them. And then I scoop it up and turn it right into compost. And that's the compost we're using today, guys. We use a closed loop system here. Okay, so we're filling up. We're almost there. As you can see, the, uh, while we were over there getting the, uh, the compost ready, the, the bucket, the barrel filled up here. Um, and we're just gonna basically add this compost right to it. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Number one, you could just put this on the side like I showed you before. I'm gonna actually uh, try to get my, my uh, this stick down in it. There we go. Got my sleeves wet a little bit. No big deal, guys. It's beautiful out. A little rainy, actually, but it's about 65, 70 degrees here. Okay. So that's all we're looking to really do. And you can see that water immediately turn dark. It's almost like we're making coffee, except this is, uh, this is coffee for your plants. So that's already starting to steep. So we got that into position there. That's nice and tight. That's not gonna go anywhere. Man, look at that compost too. Already it looks good, but we have to let this brew. And not only that, we have to let this water cool down or heat up a little bit. We don't want it to be cold water because right out of the, um, the well here, 
it's pretty cold water. It's probably 50 degrees. Bacteria thrive at like between 70 and 90. Um, so we're gonna let this water warm up. Just using the air pump here, the water actually does get warm. The air is pretty warm coming out of it. Um, so it'll, uh, it'll warm up for us. So once this starts filling up, go ahead and turn the air on. I'll turn it on now. Okay, now there's other, there's other inputs you can do with this. You don't just have to make compost tea. Uh, you could do kelp tea by just adding kelp to this in water and let it, let it brew. You can do, um, I, I do an IPM, which is an integrated pest management recipe, and I use a, uh, it's karamja, which is a, an Indian plant, and also neem, uh, neem cake meal, which is also an Indian plant. Uh, there you have very smelly pests don't like them so I'll brew that stuff in here as well and uh, spray it on the plants leaves so that really the the sky is the limit as far as your creativity is um, and what you want to do with a brewer like this so I really recommend doing that so here we go we turn it on and it starts to brew just like that guys Beautiful. All right, guys, so that's really it as far as um, uh, adding the compost to the water. It's, it's really simple. Um, like I said, you could find that uh, that little build out, that the plan of how I made that octagon looking thing, uh, down in the description below. It was actually a study done by, I believe it was Oregon, uh, Oregon University or somewhere, State Oregon University. Um, one of the universities came up with this thing and uh, they actually made it open for the public to take. So I'll go ahead and I'll share it with you down in the description below. Um, and just do me a favor and hit that like button if you like this video. Um, hit that like button if you like you know, just the, the idea of compost tea, which I think everybody should like. It really helps me out a lot. Um, it helps this channel spread, like I said. And subscribe if you want to see more from me. I mean, I know I'm not the best content creator out there. I know there's a ton of other people that make way better videos than me, but I'm learning and you guys can learn with me. So hit the subscribe button if you like that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll check in with this tomorrow. I'm going to let it brew for about 24 hours. You don't want to let it go too much longer than 48 hours, but 24 hours is a good number. So I'll come back tomorrow and uh, what we'll do is I'll show you how to distribute it and how to um, water your plants in with that um, without hurting the, the bacteria and the fungi that we create. And uh, maybe if we have time, I'll throw this under the microscope and I'll show you guys exactly what we're looking at, but no promises on that part. All right, I'll check in with you tomorrow. So we'll see what this looks like then and uh, we'll go ahead and water the plants. So see you tomorrow. Uh, the rain finally stopped. Uh, I was under there, uh, you know, getting protected by the overhang, making that compost tea. Just want to show you guys what's going on. So I have some blackberries here growing. I'm trying to grow these blackberries over the, all this fence line um, so that it's just a ton of good berries for not only myself, but the chickens too. Uh, they would love some blackberries. But uh, So there's that. Now I also wanted to just go over some of the uh, other benefits of compost tea as I walk over to the strawberry patch here and show you guys the strawberries. Um, basically there's a lot of nutrients locked up in the soil uh, just coming over to any any old soil and kicking it around a little bit you'll see that there's um you know there's a ton of stuff in there that we, we can't identify all of it but what i could tell you is that there's a lot of npk your your nitrogen your phosphorus and your potassium. Um, those are the three big building blocks, the macronutrients to growing plants. Now, um, what happens is all of that's in the soil already, but the plant root can't get to that just in its raw form. It needs to be broken down uh, to in a plant available form or a plant digestible form. It's kind of like you can't just go into the refrigerator and grab some frozen meat or some raw meat and eat it. You kind of have to cook it and prepare it in order for the, the plants to take it in. 
or for you to take it in. And the same goes for the plants with the NPK. And that's where the bacteria and fungi come into play. So the bacteria and the fungi break down those macro and micronutrients and deliver them to the plant's roots um, in, a, in an available format that the plant can take. So that's what compost tea really does. Um, your compost tea is going to um, deliver that bacteria, a fighting force of bacteria and fungi, to then start breaking down the nutrients that are in your soil already and, um, and essentially give your plants a power boost. So uh, that's why you really want to make compost tea. Now it doesn't happen instantly like most things in the natural world, but if, over time you will be building the fertility and the, the populations of your compost um, and of your soil, and you'll have wonderful, wonderful soil that your plants just love to grow. So I'm showing you guys some plants here. I have planted out this whole bed here. Now I have a bunch of fruit trees, and then I also planted my cantaloupes and watermelons and pumpkins all in this patch here. And this is gonna become a, uh, a, uh, a nice undergrowth for the, um, for the trees. So, Everything here is going to be coated in the compost throughout the year. So I just wanted to show you guys a quick video today of why, how I make compost and why I make compost and exactly what I'm going to be using it for. So um, tomorrow when we come back, we will see that the, um, the compost is complete and when we can throw it on these plants and almost see instant instant uh, green and almost instant growth. I, I know it doesn't happen that quickly, but it seems to be that way. Once you, once you guys see it, you'll know it too. So um, let's go ahead and, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you then. All right guys, so we're back. It's the very next day and our compost tea here is just about done. Now I have a couple little bit of extra additives that aren't really necessary, but I like to add and I'm gonna go through those right now. Okay, so the first additive that I'm going to put in here is alfalfa meal. Now you can put alfalfa straw uh, in, the, in the, the brewer itself too. I'm going to take some alfalfa meal and sprinkle it around in there. Um, what this does is alfalfa is known to have an increased population of protozoa. And now what protozoa are is a bacteria that, well, it's an organism that eats bacteria. So it's kind of like the, sh if you're thinking of your, your compost tea as an ocean, the bacteria are the little fishes, the protozoa is the shark in the water. It's the predator and it eats the bacteria. Now why that's important is because the bacteria contain all of the nutrients in their body um, that's locked up or it's unavailable to the plant until that nutrient is unlocked through either death consumption, decomposition, etc., etc. So what the protozoa do is they help speed that process up and they eat the bacteria. And then obviously when they eat, they also excrete uh, out the back end. And that what that is is plant available nutrients in the form of protozoa fecal matter, I guess. Um, but anyway, that's why we're adding protozoa to our compost to kind of speed up that cycle of life in the compost tea. So that's that uh, in the form of alfalfa meal. Second, I'm going to be adding humic acid. So humic acid is a component that comes over time in the natural world, usually found on forest, old gross forest floors. Um, when things decompose and then decompose and continue to decompose, they start to create humic acids. And the humic acids are extremely important for plant root growth um, and really the, the ability for the, the soil to kind of hold on like a battery to the nutrients. So this is just gonna help speed up that process in my soils again, because I don't have a couple tens of thousands of years to spend on my garden for it to develop this stuff on its own. So this is just a little way to speed it up. So you only use a little bit of this and actually they, on the back, it tells you right there, let me see if I can get it, if it's gonna focus in for me. It tells me right there for compost tea, add 10 to 30 milliliters per gallon. Now, I'm going to cut this back a little bit because I'm going to be doing foliar spraying and all of that. Also with soil drenches, I'll probably do 10 milliliters per gallon in this. And I have a little conversion cup here that'll help me do that. Now, once, I, once again, guys, you don't need to add this. This is just a little additive that I like to use. I saw great results in it when I was doing uh, indoor gardening plants, indoor peppers. Um, those really showed the results when I used this stuff. So I figured let's use it in the outdoor as well. 
Um, and last but not least, I'm going to be adding a little bit of aloe vera. Um, and aloe vera is helpful. It really, um, from what I've read, is it helps the cell structure in the plants. Um, I'm not 100% sure on how well this works. This is kind of a little bit of an experiment. But I read that if you add aloe vera to your, um, to your compost tea, it makes it a little bit more wettable. Um, meaning it allows like the surface area of the plant to kind of hold on to that compost tea a little bit. Uh, if you think of like a slime, it kind of adds like a, a slime layer, not so much to the water. Um, but that's what I've read. So it makes it more, the, the water more wettable. Now you can achieve this same thing through uh, yucca. Uh, I know that the yucca root, they make a yucca powder and you could achieve the same concept by adding it to your compost tea. It makes the water a little more viscous or wettable that will um, it'll stick to the leaves a little bit better when you're doing a foliar spray. In my case, I'm doing a foliar spray and a, a, a soil drench. So, you know, one in, one, it, it should be okay. I don't, I'm not too sure about this stuff. So, like I said, None of these three things you have to add. Your compost tea alone is going to be spectacular. However, I have them on hand. I'm going to give them a try. So I'll let you guys know how it works. All right, so let me, put, let me show you guys what the compost tea looks like after 24 hours. And then I'll go into a little bit of how we're going to, um, how we're going to apply this stuff. So stay with me, guys. All righty, here we go. There it is, guys, the compost tea. We let this bubble all night. We're using our... Our air pump here, got that on Amazon. I'll put a link down to this thing in the description below as well. It's, uh, it's like about 80 bucks or something like that. They have all different sizes too. You don't need a, this big of a size, guys. You can achieve this with a five gallon bucket. Um, and here we go. So it looks really good, nice and dark. Let me show you guys the color of that. And yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't see anything floating in the water, which is nice. Now I have a microscope and I, um, I'm not going to do it today, but in the future, I'll take you guys in uh, under the microscope with me and I'll show you exactly what's moving around in this, uh, this type of compost tea. The water's pretty warm. I don't have a temperature or a thermometer, but I'd say probably 70, 75 degrees, which is good for bacterial growth. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys how I apply this stuff. All right, guys, so I got you over near my radishes in my uh, square foot garden here. Um, these are just uh, regular radishes. I planted them in the square foot gardening method. Now, I have a video on this. You guys can check that out. I'll leave that up on the, um, the cards up top. Uh, but basically what we're doing is I had the, the chaplain sprayer, and this thing I'll also put in the description below, this, uh, this uh, cement sprayer. It's really good for this. Um, it comes with a little bit of a tip and it sprays the plant. It gives a nice spray. So as you can see, this is all I'm doing. This is the, the compost tea, and I'm just spraying the tops. I'm, I'll come down, I'll do my kale, I'll do everything. Now I'm not eating any of this yet. I wouldn't spray your kale with compost tea if you're gonna harvest it and eat it. Um, but yeah, this is really, this is all there is to it, guys. You just uh, go through, spray them, and they will love you for it. Over here is my cabbages. Give these a little bit of a spray. And I just do a light foliar to start. I come over, I hit everything on the top, and then I come and I do a root drench as well. I, I make sure everything's watered in really nicely with it. But that's really all there is to it, guys. I'm just gonna keep on doing this. I'll show you guys. Um, I'll show you guys an example of how to do a fruit tree now too. Let's go over there and do that. All right, guys. So here we are. This is a uh, the peach tree, and it's got some nice fruit set on it. I thinned it back to have about maybe six or eight peaches on this. Uh, it's a smaller tree. I want it to grow some more. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to spray your your fruit trees. So I'm just coming in. And I'm just hitting all the leaves. I want to make sure that all the leaves are getting some of this great compost tea. And that's all I'm doing, guys. You just come in, you spray. I do the under the leaves. I even spray the fruit set a little bit. Now, there'll be plenty of rains before this is, uh, you know, if these are ready to harvest. So I'm not worried about that. And that's really it. Just one, two, three, guys. That's, it's so easy. Anybody can do this. So, uh... 
All right, guys, so I got a lot of work to do out there uh, spraying some, some fruit trees and all my gardens and plants and everything around the property. So I'll let you leave you guys to it. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you learned something. Maybe uh, you got something from compost tea and you'll try it at home yourself. Um, you don't need all this fancy equipment, although I will leave links down in the description below for everything that I use today, so you can find that there. Uh, thanks for coming along today, guys. I really do appreciate the view at the bare minimum. If you want to hit the like button, that's kudos, extra kudos points. And if you want to hit the subscribe button, you get a gold medal from me. So uh, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Oh, and don't forget, if you have any questions about what I did today or any questions about what you think I might have should have done, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll answer every single comment that comes my way. So um, yeah, without that, Without further ado, guys, have a nice day, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.